The Kia Cerato has been the brand's top-selling model here for some time, and that's no surprise given its sharp pricing and market-leading seven-year warranty. Now, there's this new one, but does it have what it takes to sway Australian buyers from SUVs? Here on test we have the flagship Sport Plus, which is priced from $26,190 drive away. Key equipment highlights include leather trim, climate control, keyless entry with push button start and adaptive cruise control. Features carried over from lower models include a rear view camera with dynamic guidelines, front and rear parking sensors, along with autonomous emergency braking and lane keep assist. The metallic red paint you see here adds a further $520, while blind spot monitoring and rear cross traffic alert are part of a $500 option pack. One of the first things you're going to notice about the new Serato is that it looks a lot more aggressive and expensive than the car it replaces. This angry face was inspired by the larger Stinger liftback, and if you look a little bit closer, these quad LED daytime running lights look like they might belong on a Porsche. Filling the arches are these 17-inch star spoke alloys with a nice machined finish, and if you follow the sloping roof line into the back, you'll see these wraparound tail lights and chunky rear bumper that give the Serato a nice and muscular stance. It's a shame these aren't LED, you'll probably have to wait for the GT for those, and if sedans aren't your thing, you're going to have to wait about six months for the hatchback, and we don't even know what that looks like yet. Anyway, let's have a look inside. One area that Kia has made huge inroads lately is in terms of interior fit and finish, and the Serato is a really good example of that. On the dash and the doors, you have these really nice soft touch plastics, and even the steering wheel has a really nice leather trim to it, and it feels really great in the hand. The buttons and dials are really nicely damped, and they feel solid when you press them, so you know it's not plasticky and nasty in here. These plastics down here are a bit scratchy and hard, but in all fairness, you're not going to be touching them, so it doesn't really matter. The centerpiece of the dashboard is this new 8-inch high-resolution touchscreen with Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, native satellite navigation, and digital radio. It's fully spec'd. And down here you have things like a USB and auxiliary input, a dedicated USB charger, and a 12-volt charging outlet as well. Let's talk about storage. Between the two front seats, you've got these cup holders here, which can hold a small bottle. You've also got door pockets that can fit a small bottle, but they're a bit tight, so if you've got a large drink bottle or something, you might not be able to fit it in there. Here, under the center console, you've got two shelves that are large enough to store your phone. And then between the front seats, there's another cubby that can fit your wallet and other trinkets, and there's another USB charging port here as well. So, front passengers are well catered for, then how about the back? Here in the back, there's decent room for even taller passengers. I'm just a little bit over six foot one and I can fit behind my own driving position quite comfortably. There's a good amount of knee room and there's just enough headroom for me here. You've also got things like rear air vents and a center armrest with cup holders. You've also got Isofix child mounts on the two outboard rear seats, a map pocket here. For some reason, you don't get one behind the driver. There's also no USB charging here either, which means that if you've got devices for your rear passengers, they're not able to charge them. The door trims back here are a little bit hard and scratchy, but the armrest is nice and padded. But there aren't too many complaints. But let's have a look at the boot. Back here, you've got 502 litres of space, which is plenty of room for a large suitcase. And if you need to carry longer items, the back seats fold 60-40. If you're carrying heavier items, however, this high loading lip might make things a little bit more difficult. Finally, under the floor, there's a space saver spare wheel. The Serato comes with the same 2 litre naturally aspirated petrol engine as the previous model, which means you get 112 kilowatts of power and 192 newton metres of torque. That's sent to the front wheels via a six-speed automatic in the Sport Plus, but in the base S you can also get a six-speed manual. In terms of performance, the Serato probably isn't going to blow your socks off. It doesn't have the same low down urge that you might get from a turbocharged rival, but around town where this car is going to spend most of its time, it gets up to speed fine and the transmission shifts quickly and intuitively so that you don't feel like it's hunting for gears or slurring through all the ratios. Fuel consumption is rated at an official 7.4 litres per 100 k's, and right now we're averaging just that. While engine performance isn't a standout, once you're moving, the Serato is a really comfortable place to be. Thanks to Kia's local suspension tune, the Serato rides really nicely in town and on the freeway, even though it borders a little bit on the firmer side. And these seats are really fantastic over longer journeys as well, you're always going to feel comfortable in here. The steering has a really good feel to it. It's not too heavy and it's not too light, so you always feel like you know what the wheels are doing, but you can also park it without too much trouble. One area where the Serato really does fall down, however, is in terms of noise insulation. Something that we've noticed during our time with the car is that over rougher surfaces, the tires can get really noisy. So if you're doing a lot of country miles, that might be something worth considering. If you're in the market for an affordable small car, we'd definitely recommend putting the Kia Serato on your shopping list. While it doesn't put the Sport in Sport Plus, it does offer a heap of kit and space for not a lot of cash. And you've also got that great seven-year warranty. 
For the full review, head to caradvice.com and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos.